What's up everybody, it's the Dean Parker. The time has come yet again for another Halloween Horror Nights review. Yes, I know, tomorrow is the final day of Halloween Horror Nights, but I just couldn't wait to get my review out to you guys. Today I'm going to show you and tell you my review of this year's Halloween Horror Nights 28 at Universal Orlando Resort. I'm also going to show you guys my merchandise and uh, tell you what I thought about the event. So let's jump into it. First what I'm going to show you guys is I'm going to show you guys the map. So this is the map for this year. As you can see it features Stranger Things on it, on the front. And also advertises Halloween 4 and Poltergeist. When you open it up, you got your survival tips, dining, and shopping. And we'll look at some of the merchandise, some of this that you will see in the video. And then, of course, the map itself, depicting where all the houses are. All right, let's get into the review. Now, this year was a record-breaking Halloween Horror Nights. There was a total of 10 houses, the most that anyone has ever seen Halloween Horror Nights at Universal do. And boy, did they do a good job this year. Each house was based around the 80s, along with the scare zones as well being based around the 80s. So let's jump into my review. Starting off with the big one that everyone expected this year, and was excited for this year, Netflix original Stranger Things. When I walked into this house, I knew I was in the show. Right from the very beginning, you are literally thrown into the first episode of the season. You basically walk through the entire season, you see it all. You see the Demogorgons, you see the kids, you see... Um, the uh, you see the the shed that Will was hiding in. You you step into the upside upside down. They bring you into the upside down. The scares were good. There weren't a lot of scares, but as being a fan of the show, I gave the um, house a rating of a super ten, meaning it was one of the ones at the top of my list that I enjoyed. Uh, just taking a little bit of a pause here with my review, uh, just will be letting everyone know, I have rated the houses on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 being all above, I enjoyed it, and uh, it had good scares. 1 being could have been better. I'll let you know, not any of these houses received a 1, although I would have given one house a 1. That's about it. Uh, Dead Exposure, Patient Zero. This is a prequel to the house in 2008. Now, I didn't go to Halloween Horror Nights in 2008 uh, when the original Dead Exposure uh, was there. Um, but this house follows that almost same story, but it's the prequel to it. Um, very well done in this house. Uh, the scares are fantastic. And the reason being, the house is completely in the dark. You can't see anything. And if you're not good with strobe lights, I would suggest that you sit this one out. Um, it was a very good house. Um, you know, with it being in the dark and how they were creating the, the dark effect, they really did a good job at it. Um, the whole setting of Paris was really cool, um, but there was like no Eiffel Tower or anything, but you were like in the streets of Paris. Um, so, again, this is another house that is, uh, that is getting a Super 10 rating for just how, how amazing it was. The scares were phenomenal, the actors were phenomenal, and the makeup was just on point with everything. Um, moving on to Trick or Treat. This uh, was represented as a scare zone last year in the Central Park area of the park. Um, it, it was good as a scare zone. 
and it actually won Scare Zone of the Year. Um, but the house this year, I went through it multiple times, and I just felt like it was missing stuff. It was good, but it could have been better. There were parts in the house where you were walking through and it was kind of a dead zone where there really wasn't much um, going on. And I think it was a little bit upsetting. I mean, unless you're a fan of the movie. I'm a fan of the movie. I've seen it a couple times now. It's a great movie. It's a great anthology. But it didn't have the scares that I think a lot of people were expecting. Um, it had it had some good scares here and there, um, but overall I had to give it a rating of an 8 out of 10. Um, moving on to Slaughter Cinema. Uh, every year we always have that comedy house. Um, last year was Ash vs. Evil Dead, uh, represented by stars. This year is Slaughter Cinema. This house is just cheesy to the max with a whole bunch of B uh, horror movies like Pumpkin Guts, um, Cannibals from Planet Hell, um, Boss, uh, no not Boss Baby, <laughs> that's a different movie, um, Cult of the Beast Baby, um, Barber Chop, a whole bunch of just cheesy B rated Halloween movies and each one you walked into how they set it up as you were walking into each of the movies, you literally felt like you were walking into a drive-in. And how they set it up as you were walking into the film was really cool. They had like that box that you put in your car that had the speaker on it, and that was telling you about the movie as you stepped right into it. Um, the scares were phenomenal. Um, all the costumes, the makeup, the sets were great. And for that, I give it, again, another Super 10 rating. Uh, next is Carnival Graveyard Rust in Pieces. What's amazing about this house is that everywhere you look in the house, um, there is an Easter egg from Universal's past and Halloween Horror Nights past. Now, this isn't like a tribute to Halloween Horror Nights, but there's a lot of stuff in there that you will notice from Horror Nights past. Like, there's a skull from the Festival of the Deadliest Scare Zone. There's a baby head from Dollhouse of the Damned from Halloween Horror Nights 24. Um, and if you look real closely, when you walk into the house over on your right, you'll notice that there's a sign that says Palace, which is um, in reference to the Universal Palace Theater which was from Halloween Horror Nights 19, uh, ripped from the silver screen. Um, another thing, the place that you're stepping into is called Sal's Amusement Salvage. And if you think about it real hard, it's Universal's uh, Amusement Salvage. That's what a lot of people are seeing it as. And don't take my word on that, it's, but that's what people are seeing. Um, the scares were great. It was like a really twisted funhouse, kind of like-esque house. Um, wasn't really like a lot of like smells with the fog and everything. Um, but the sights that you were seeing, the mask, the costumes, all the sets and all the Easter eggs that were part of it were really great and added to the fun of the house. The scares were okay. There were some good scares here and there. It depends on what cast you got. Um, but for what I experienced, it was good. Um, but I, I'm giving it a rating of um, 8 out of 10. Excuse me there, I had a hiccup. Uh, next, we move on to Halloween 4. Uh, the shape never seems to die. That's right, Michael Myers is back for the third time at Halloween Horror Nights uh, since he first appeared at Halloween Horror Nights in 2014 for Halloween 1 uh, and then he came back in 2016 uh, for um, HHN 26 
for Hell Comes to Haddonfield, and now we're back to uh, with Halloween for the Revenge, uh, the Return of Michael Myers, and this one follows the movie. Um, you basically start right from the from the beginning of the movie uh, to like a battle with uh, Loomis and Michael. Um, the house was good, really good scares. Uh, one of the best houses, aside from Krampus, that they've ever done. It was located in the Shrek Theater, the second Shrek Theater. Um, and it was, honestly, a lot of people are saying it was one of the best houses, design-wise and aesthetically, that they've ever done inside that Shrek Theater. Um, it, it's amazing every year uh, when you see a house in that theater. Um, because it's it, it's not a big space if you look at it and if you've been in the Shrek Theater for Shrek 4D. It doesn't look like there's a lot of space in there, but how they cramp, you know, or how they fit the sets and the house in that area is just, it's phenomenal. And they've done a great job with houses in there. Uh, in 2016... Um, no, I'm sorry, 2015, they did Asylum in Wonderland in there, um, in 2016 they did Krampus, and last year they did, uh, Saw, the games of Jigsaw, um, and just this year with, you know, bringing back Halloween plus an honor, I guess they did it because of the new movie that came out, and of course it was also the, uh, 40th anniversary of the original Halloween. Um, anyway, aside from everything that I just said, um, I give Halloween for uh, The Return of Michael Myers a score of 10 out of 10. Uh, moving on to Poltergeist, uh, original of the 80s. Um, I witnessed Poltergeist for the very first time this year. I watched it and automatically fell in love with the movie. Um, again, it, it basically, you know, you travel through the movie. Um, from, you know, when stuff starts to go bad. Uh, and the, I, I don't want to give away, like, too much, because I don't want to ruin it, but if you have been through it, I'll tell you. Um, you start, basically, uh, outside, uh, in the construction area for the pool. And you basically go underground, under the house, basically encountering, um, the corpses, uh, that were left. Um, and it's just dark down there and cold and it's raining as you're walking into the house. And how they execute the beast, the monster from Poltergeist, and how you're walking through the light. And they have an entire scene just devoted to that creepy clown. Um, the house was just phenomenal. Uh, I've walked through it multiple occasions. It's actually number one of my favorites. Because, um, like, last night was my last night for the season. And I just devoted my time to walking through my favorites. And Poltergeist was the first one that I did last night. And every time it just gets better and better. The scares are on point. The sets are on point. The costumes are phenomenal. It is a plus to the movie. And for that, I give it, again, another amazing rating of a Super 10. Uh, moving on to Seeds of Extinction. This is another one of the original houses for this year. Um, this one kind of gives off, like, a uh, Poison Ivy kind of, like, vibe. But really has nothing to do with Poison Ivy. Um, this one is has a really cool story. A huge cataclysmic meteor is heading towards Earth and has crashed and basically wiped out humanity, leaving these killer plants to grow in its wake. And it is just phenomenal how they executed this house. This is in a, another new area. This is in, I guess, another parade building. It's located uh, backstage. And... It was just, every time I walk through it, the house scares me. Um, I went through it again last night, and for the first, like, half of the house, there was no one in front of me, there was no one behind me, and 
it, it scares me that much. Um, but every time that I've walked through, I've gotten nothing but great scares from the cast in those in that house. Um, and just to like see how they they've been costumed and how it's done, it's ju it's just been a phenomenal house. If there could be a sequel to that house next year, I would like to see them go bigger than they did already. But they already did phenomenal. Um, and for that, uh, again, another Super 10 score. Uh, we got two more houses on my review list before I get into um, Scare Zones and, of course, the show. And then we get to the merchandise. Um, this one, kind of a hit or miss. Um, depending on if you like any of these movies, if you care, I guess, that's the word, if you care about these movies, it, it's Blumhouse. The horrors of Blumhouse, uh, take two. Um, last year was the first year that they did, uh, this, like, Blumhouse, like, film festival. That was the whole thing. And it featured some really good movies, you know, Sinister... Insidious Purge. Um, that's the whole letdown of this house is Purge. Purge has been done multiple times um, since 2015. Uh, it's basically following the same cycle as when Walking Dead was part of Halloween Horror Nights. It's becoming a fatigue. Um, this house not just only featured the first Purge, um, but it also featured Happy Death Day. Um, and Happy Death Day in Tone is a comical horror, horror movie. And how they worked out Happy Death Day in the house was just phenomenal. How he kept walking in her steps and reliving uh, the, the day over and over again. They did a phenomenal job of that. But when you walk into the first purge section, it's... Wow, I've seen this before. To be honest, um, purge is better as a scare zone. Because the purge takes place out in the streets. Um, but I can say, and I think a lot of people can also agree with me, Purge has to go. If Walking Dead can go, Purge can go. Um, the scares were okay. Um, not really a lot to get scared at. Um, and for that being, uh, I gave uh, The Horrors of Blumhouse a rating of 7 out of 10. Uh, moving on to another, this one's another fan favorite. Um, this one, its first chapter was in 2001. I first encountered it in 2015 during the 25th anniversary as a scare zone. Uh, and what I'm talking about is Scary Tales, uh, Deadly Ever After. This house is sensory overload. Um, everything about the house inside and just before you walk in was telling the story um and from the moment that you first see the wicked witch of the west you know putting the curse on the land of the fairies was just like that started the story that started your tale walking through that house and they just did a very phenomenal job with it you walked into the different uh, story tales, uh, I mean fairy tales, um, like Hansel and Gretel, um, Little Mermaid, uh, Rapunzel, Little Miss Muffet, The Three Little Pigs, and Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Uh, and they were just phenomenal. Like, at one point you walk in and you hear, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. And you see Dorothy in chains. And of course you got the Cowley Line, the Scarecrow, and the Tin Man. And then you walk into the Hansel and Gretel part. 
and you see the witch, you see Hansel and Gretel, and you get smells from pies and just gingerbread just hits your nose. And then you walk into another part, and it's Humpty Dumpty. And basically at this point, the all the king's horses and all the king's men didn't care about putting Humpty back together again. And he's splattered all over, and you've got a smell that's supposed to be like rotten egg. And the soldiers are like puking and everything from the smell. It was just sensory overload, and it was such a good house. Um, just for the amount of scares, the costumes, and the return of an HHN fan favorite, I give this house a 10 out of 10. That is my review on the houses. Uh, now moving on to the scare zones. I'm going to be really quick on the scare zones because uh, I want to get to showing everybody uh, what I got uh, for merchandise this year. I got a good amount of merchandise. Not a lot of merchandise as last year, but I did get a, a fairly good amount. Uh, starting with the harvest. Uh, this is the scare zone that you first encounter when you walk into the park. Um, the description of this scare zone was that there were mementos of uh, things from the houses that you were going to encounter this year. Um, didn't really care for it. Uh, it, in my defense, I think it was supposed to be noted as a house, um, like a sequel to Scarecrow. And the characters in there are great. They're Scarecrows. Um, didn't really get a lot of scares from it. Uh, so unfortunately, this is the lowest score on... Uh, the list for scare zones, and I actually gave it a four, four out of ten. Uh, moving on to Vamp eighty five, I love vampires. I'm more for vampires than zombies and, um, you know, werewolves. Slashers is second in my favorite of horror icons. I love slashers, but vampires are downright my favorite. Um. You know, um, it was, this one was just really cool. It was all about uh, New Year's Eve and how they did it, you know, every 30 minutes, I think, uh, they would, uh, the ball would drop and they would celebrate New Year's Eve. The costumes were phenomenal, uh, the story was cool, and uh, for that, I give it a 10 out of 10. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, one of the most cheesiest horror movies I have ever seen in my life and I fell in love with it all the way from the beginning to the very end and to see the clowns on the street was just cool it, they stepped out of the movie the costumes were on point with what the movie was the masks were on point with what the movie was and it wasn't really much of a scary scare zone it was just one of those fun scare zones where you can go up and, you know, take pictures with them. And they were okay with it. And just, it was just a fun scare zone. And I think if they could bring it back as a house next year, I think it will get the same love as it did this year as a house. Um, and for that, I give it a 10. Uh, Twisted Traditions. This was in the Central Park uh, area of the park, and it had the pumpkins in the trees, just like Trick or Treat last year. This house, I mean, this scare zone was phenomenal. The costumes were great, the masks were great, um, what some of the actors were wearing on their heads, you know, the, it was the mask. They had these pumpkin heads, and it was just <clears throat> phenomenal. Excuse me. Um, I I loved it. It was good. Not uh, not a lot of scares. Again, with, with the scare zones this year, there was not really a lot of scares. There were points where they there were some scares for people, but for me, it was just walking by. Ooh ah uh, ooh look at that. Oh my god, I love that. Um, for me, uh, I gave it a ten. Ten out of ten. And moving on to our final scare zone before I go on about uh the show this year. Revenge of Chucky. 
Uh, Chucky is a fan favorite of a Halloween Horror Nights. He had an amazing house in 2009. And I would, first, personally, I would like to see him come back. Um, the Scare Zone was phenomenal. Uh, the actors in it were great. Uh, Chucky basically has, you know, tormented a bunch of these workers and has basically, like, taken over their souls and wants to, you know, abduct everybody and, you know, take over their body. Um... But he then realized that being a killer doll is the best thing that's ever happened to him. This scare zone was really phenomenal. The way that they decorated the Halloween sec the Hollywood section of the park, um, they did a great job. The sets that they used and the little things that they used were just amazing. Uh, for oh, there was a beautiful smell of like cake and sugar because there's like this easy bake oven section, like a killing section. And you just get the smell. Like, right when you walk into the scare zone, you're hit with that smell of, from the fog. And it was just... Mm, 10 out of 10. Moving on to the show. Academy of Villains Cyberpunk. This is Academy of Villains' third time performing with Halloween Horror Nights. Um, <coughs> and they did a phenomenal job with this show. Uh, in my defense, this is one of the best shows that they've ever put on since the one that they did in 2016 when they were first introduced to Halloween Horror Nights. Um, and I, what I loved about this show, it followed a story. There was a plot line. There was an ending. You know, it had a start and a finish. Um, the show followed the story, and the dance moves were great, and of course, Academy of Villains was just phenomenal. In honor of that, I give them a super 10. Alright, that is my review for Houses, Scare Zones, and Gels. I am now going to get on with showing merchandise. Just let me get it on in front. I'm going to show off the little stuff first and then work up to the big stuff. So, first thing I'm going to show you, this is the shot glass for this year. It says Universal Halloween Horror Nights 2018. You got this cracked open pumpkin, which is like releasing an entity out of it. And then as you turn it around, you got Sam, Michael Myers, and Poltergeist. All on that. Next, this is like the main event pin for this year. This is the Stranger Things pin. Come on, focus. It's got the Christmas light wall on it. And it actually lights up. And spells out... Is it going to focus? It spells out R-U-N. For run. I don't think it's gonna focus. I tried its hardest. Um oops, I showed that upside down. There we go. I showed that upside down. I'm sorry. So that's the event pen. Moving on, you got the Uniminis for this year. You got eleven. The Demogorgon. And then you have the annual pass holder pen, which actually uh, glows in the dark. So that's all the small stuff. Oh, another thing that I got, I don't have them with me. I got like those light up horns. I got those last night. Um, next, this is one of the cups that you could get, like the Coca-Cola Freestyle Cups. Um, there were two of these. This one was just like a public general one. Um, and then there was another one that came out for, uh, if you had the Frequent Fear Pass. Um, so you got, let's do, look at what's right. No, that's a Scarecrow. You got the Scarecrow. Uh, you got Coca-Cola Freestyle um, 
you got a clown, crazy clown, some zombies. It's been through a lot. It's been hit through a lot. And then, of course, you got Universal Orlando Halloween Horror Nights uh, with, like, a scary-looking pumpkin. Uh, we're now moving on to some of the bigger stuff. Um, so, next... We got the Amulet of Fear. This is an interactive thing that they started uh, this year um, with Halloween Horror Nights. Um, it actually lights up. You can actually change colors. And then you can't really see it. Um, but it actually vibrates as well. Um, when you turn it on RFID, in the scare zones, it will light up and vibrate. So, and then this is the lanyard. You can actually take the lanyard off. I'm not going to take the lanyard off. The lanyard was short, <clears throat> and it had nothing really to do with the 80s, but it's a cool design on the lanyard. Moving on to the next lanyard. Uh, this is the Stranger Things lanyard. There you have 11. Welcome to Hawkins, Stranger Things. You have the kids. And then on the other side, Stranger Things, you got the Demogorgon. <clears throat> and then on this side, right here, you have a little bit of the Christmas light wall. So that's the lanyards. Uh, and then I got the socks. On one you got the Demogorgon and the boys from Stranger Things. And then on the other one you got Michael Myers, Sam, the Beast, and uh, TV from Poltergeist. And then on the back of the socks it says we know what scares you. That was like the tagline for this year. That and true fear comes from within. Next is the drawstring bag. You got the Demogorgon, Eleven, Michael Myers, The Beast, Poltergeist, The Pumpkin, The Boys, and Sam. And then you got Halloween Horror Nights 2018 on the bottom. Next, I'm going to show you the shirts. This is, I like to call this one, the Icon shirt. It's got the key art on it. And then on the back, it says, We Know What Scares You. And it's in that, like, stick sticky red lettering that used to be on the shirts. And it's on, like, the Demogorgon, um, the Beast, Michael's Blade, Sam's Lollipop. And then you got the house shirt, which says, we know, uh, no, true fear comes from within. And then on the back, you got all the houses, Stranger Things, Trick or Treat, Poltergeist, Seeds of Extinction, Slaughter Cinema, Dead Exposure, Colonel Graveyard, Scary Tales. And the reason why Harvest is on there is because they thought that uh, at the time they thought that Horrors of Blumhouse was going to back out. Um, and the Harvest was supposed to be a house, um, but they didn't put it... Uh, they didn't put uh, Blumhouse on there. 
And the final item that I bought this year is another poster from my Horror Nights poster collection. This is the key art poster. We know what scares you. You got the Demogorgon, Michael Myers, the Beast, Poltergeist, Eleven, Sam, and the boys. And the Cracked Pumpkin. Alright. Well, another year has come and gone. Halloween Horror Nights 28 was phenomenal. We can't wait to see what Halloween Horror Nights 29 has in store. Comment down below, let me know what your favorite part of Halloween Horror Nights 28 was, and tell me what you're looking forward to and what you would like to see at Halloween Horror Nights 29. Get ready because the holiday season is coming up, so I'm going to try and be out there to take some video and take some pictures of the, uh, of the Christmas stuff. Uh, if you want, follow my Twitter. Uh, at TimeLord1124 um, and yeah thank you guys for watching if you uh, could uh, hit the thumbs up button if you like this video make sure to subscribe and uh, turn on the bell for notifications but until next time thanks for watching guys bye